Today I'd like to talk about unit cost production focused on what does it cost to produce a unit of product off your ranch. Before I get into the presentation I want to give credit where credit's due and I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of different people who have contributed to the presentation today. The thoughts and ideas that I've learned from them is what you find here in the content and so I want to make sure they get credit for that. So unit cost production. What is unit cost production? How is it calculated? And what benefits are there to knowing unit cost production for ranch managers? This graph I think shows nicely what's happened in terms of cow cost over the last 30 years or so. You go back to 1985 and you can see we trended along from $300 to $400 there. Then we got in early 2000s and started to ramp up. The last 10 years we've seen a major increase. Cow cost have basically doubled if we go back to 2005 and so that's a significant increase from where we were and I think it's important to understand that as we think about where prices are today and the increase we've seen in these costs and thinking about ways to manage those to improve profit. Unit cost production is simply a ratio. It's the costs in the numerator divided by units produced, in this case pounds of weaned calf. The value of unit cost production is it combines both input costs and production and it measures the impact and shows the benefit of inputs. And that really can help us understand if we're spending a dollar, what are we getting back in terms of value, in terms of product produced. There are two types of cost in the numerator as we think about unit cost production as it relates to cow-calf production. There's direct costs, those things that increase incrementally for each calf we have produced or each cow we have in production. Things like vaccines, protein supplement, salt and mineral, those are direct costs. If we add a cow, we're going to expect to buy another unit of vaccine, more protein supplement, more salt and mineral. Overhead costs are those things that don't necessarily change so rapidly or so much with the number of cows we have in production. These are things like labor, equipment, horses and buildings. If I have 300 cows and I buy 100 cows from my neighbor, I'm probably not going to go out and hire another person to help me or buy another four-wheeler get another horse, build another calving shed. The equipment and labor I have will just now be spread over 400 cows instead of 300. That can help, I think, distinguish but the difference between overhead costs and direct costs. This graph, I think, shows nicely the kind of challenge we have in terms of managing overhead and direct costs and the revenue part. The profit part of this graph is between the green line and the red line up there towards the right, that area between revenue and direct costs is where profit occurs. So things we can do to reduce overhead cost or direct cost while maintaining revenue or reduce direct cost and overhead cost and maybe still decrease revenue some but decrease at a lesser rate than we decrease the cost is going to improve profitability. On the production side of things, obviously we have to have pounds of product to sell. And so that becomes important as we think about what are those things that influence the production side of the cow-calf business. Things like pregnancy rates, calving rates, weaning rates, and of course calf weight at weaning all influence the pounds of calf we produce. You can't manage what you don't measure. And so if we're going to be able to get a handle on what our unit cost production values are, we have to have some best basic financial and production record keeping numbers. Almost every decision you make on a ranch influences your unit cost production. For example, if you decide to go out and buy a pickup that's going to be used primarily in the production of weaned calves, the cost of that pickup needs to be allocated to the cow herd over the expected life of that pickup. That tractor and feed outfit that you're pulling, that has a cost and that needs to be allocated proportionally to the cow herd bull expense, vaccines, things like that all have an influence on unit cost production. As we think about direct costs that go into unit cost of production, there's some point of diminishing returns, meaning that we just can't continue to add inputs into the system and expect to get the same result in terms of production of output. I think a good example for me in this is an example of a hay meadow. We're going to get some level of increased production per unit of fertilizer or unit of phosphorus that we put on, but as we add additional units, we get less and less grants response 
to that unit of fertilizer. And so there comes a point in time when the cost of the additional fertilizer is no longer a benefit as the value of the forage produced is equal to or costs more, or excuse me, equal to or has a value less than the cost of the fertilizer. So in this graph, that point of diminishing returns is where we stop seeing increased production, but somewhere to the left of that is where we actually have reached a point where there's no economic value to us anymore for additional inputs. And so we need to think about that with unit cost production and we think about the cow herd. We want to make sure that every dollar we're putting into that cow, or we're getting more than a dollar back. Along with that, we also want to be thinking about strategically about our inputs. There may be certain situations where we can take some inputs away from that cow where we might spend less, maybe the input costs a dollar, but the value of what she takes away from us is only 70 cents, and so we gain some net margin there. And so we really want to be evaluating our inputs carefully to see where we have an opportunity to improve. As we think about ranch profitability, how do you know if your ranch made a profit? Are you looking at your balance sheet? Are you looking at your change in net worth? And that's a definite part of evaluating ranch profitability. In most cases, most ranches have a Schedule F that they work with their accountant to fill out to file their taxes and maybe a balance sheet. Uh, in many cases also hopefully a cash flow statement that they use with their banker. But I really question, is this really enough information to get, make good management decisions? How do you know where to make changes in your ranch? How do you know if that decision to buy that input or to spend that money actually is going to improve your profitability? I'm not sure that a Schedule F and a balance sheet in and of themselves are enough information to make those decisions. In fact, I would argue that I don't believe they are. Most ranches I work with have more than one enterprise on the ranch. I think it's good to ask yourself what enterprises are part of my ranch. Most ranches have some kind of land base that's owned, in many cases also have land that's rented. Uh, many have a cow-calf enterprise. They may also have a hay enterprise. Hay is put up on the ranch as part of the forage that's produced. They may also have a stocker yearling enterprise, a replacement heifer development enterprise. Uh, they may take the colt cows or those cows that don't fit their calving window and then uh, do some development with those open cows and sell them as breads. That could be another enterprise. Understanding and seeing that there's different enterprises on your ranch can really help you begin to identify and see uh, where opportunities might be to make changes and improve. Here's just a good picture, I think, of different enterprises that we would commonly find on a ranch. And I'm guessing your ranch has many of these as well. Let's take, for example, the land enterprise. Most of us, when we think about land, are thinking about forage grown for livestock. Forage primarily grown, in most cases, as we're thinking about a cow-calf or stalker yearling enterprise. But that land has other values besides just the forage it produces for grazing. For example, there's the scenery that's uh, part of that piece of land that has value to other people. Maybe it's the serenity that's there, the peace and quiet. Might be some conservation value or recreation opportunities. The water that flows across it, the water that falls from the sky that uh, falls on it, that has a value. The wind that blows across it, the wildlife, the minerals that are there are all things that have value to that land enterprise and so we need to think about that and the values that it generates beyond just its grazing and forage value. When we think about enterprise analysis, we want to break that ranch into enterprises and we want to ask those different enterprises to pay fair market value when we move resources in between them. For example, the cow-calf enterprise needs to pay the land business on paper anyway for the value of the grazing that occurs. The hay enterprise needs to purchase the value of the forage that the land business grew before you run a swather in there and lay that crop on the ground. The stalker yearling enterprise needs to pay the cow-calf enterprise fair market value for those weaned calves. So you can begin to see uh, how we do that and how we break that out. Doing this allows us to see where value is being generated, where costs occur, and which enterprises are returning us the great net, greatest net dollars per unit of input of forage. So if our primary purpose is to harvest the forage from this ranch, market it through some cattle, 
we want to be saying where are we generating the greatest net dollars per unit of forage or per unit of input. And then think about how can we make adjustments or change to continue and improve that. I think it's also important as we think about an enterprise analysis, we need to have a three to five year type window that we're looking at. Obviously, some year-to-year -year variation can really impact whether an enterprise is profitable or not. For example, in 2012, if you grew hay on the ranch, that hay you produced had tremendous value. Not so when we record this in 2015. In many cases, hay production on the ranch this year is going to be below its uh, cost of production, meaning its market value is less than what it cost to produce. And so we want to look at these enterprises over a long-term period of time before we start making drastic changes. There are some challenges and dangers of enterprise analysis that we do need to be aware of and pay attention to. First is how do we break out and allocate costs? For example, the tractor that we use in the cow-calf enterprise that we use to do uh, maintenance on the ranch that we use for projects there is the same ranch that, or is the same tractor that we use to pull the baler across the hay field runs the hay buster in the wintertime. So how do we break out that tractor according to its costs? And then how do we allocate those? And so being able to identify number of hours, number of use is one way to do that. And over time, it'll begin to give you a picture of where costs are occurring related to that tractor expense. Another thing we need to be careful of with enterprise analysis is just the variation in production and expense that can skew results, especially for one year. In 2015, if you sold calves in the fall of the year, the net income from that cow-calf enterprise probably looked really good. But those calves generated a lot of revenue, and so that particular enterprise looked pretty good. On the same token, in 2012, as we already mentioned, the hay enterprise uh, really probably looked good in that year just because of the revenue that it generated. And so you want to look at enterprises over a, a few years recognize the variation that's occurring in production or expenses to help you evaluate whether or not that enterprise needs to be part of your mix or how that enterprise might be changed to better meet your goals. Another thing to be aware of is simply eliminating an enterprise will always eliminate all the costs associated with it. And again, I'm going to use the example of haying. So let's say, for example, we decide we're not going to put up hay anymore, we're going to graze our meadows and so we sell our haying equipment, but we still need that tractor that we use to pull the baler to run a hay buster in the wintertime and uh, to have available to move some snow or to do some projects around the ranch. So no, the cow-calf enterprise, the stalker yearling enterprise, uh, the land business have to cover all the costs associated with that tractor where before part of the tractor's expense was allocated to the hay enterprise. And so you can see by eliminating the hay enterprise, our tractor costs for some of our other enterprises may actually go up. In fact, I would expect they would, as now those enterprises have to cover all the expenses related to the tractor. Knowing your unit cost production for an enterprise, in my mind, really provides information to help you make good management decisions. Some of the values I see in knowing your unit cost production include budgeting. When you know what you spent last year, it just gives you the power to make effective decisions as you think about what you're going to spend this next year. It gives you a lot of power in evaluating your inputs, thinking about what was my cost of production last year? What did I get in terms of value back for each input I put in? Is there, Do I want to put more of an input in because of the value produced, or do I want to reduce some inputs, maybe because the value being generated by them wasn't offset uh, by the expense that was in the input? We also can evaluate enterprises or entities. When we break the ranch into enterprises, we can know it cost me $100 a ton to produce a ton of hay, or it cost me $2 a pound to produce a weaned calf. It costs me 80 cents to put a pound of gain on a stalker or a yearling. When I know those values, then it can help me evaluate the enterprises I have and identify those that maybe I want to expand and also those that I want to change or eliminate. I also think there's a lot of value in knowing your unit cost production as it relates to marketing and risk management. When you know what your costs are, then you can think about opportunities to maybe market at a profit or protect a price and avoid some of the wild fluctuations that we can sometimes see in these markets. 
when you know your unit cost of production also gives you the opportunity to benchmark or compare your operation against others and find ways that maybe someone else is doing something creative that you can learn from. Also may find out what some of your competitive advantages are and how you might grow those advantages to continue to improve your overall ranch's profitability and competitiveness in the marketplace. As we think about benchmarking, there are some things I think that are of a value to compare as we think about comparing cow-calf enterprises to one another. The first, of course, is price per pound of calf wean per cow exposed. And I realize is that there's some real differences between a 400 pound calf and a 600 pound calf. So if you start comparing uh, unit cost production for calves, you want to be comparing to others that are selling a similar or like product or a similar type of calf. But being able to compare to something else can help you maybe identify again where your competition lies, where your advantages are, and maybe where you can make some changes to improve. Production values are things like pregnancy rates, calving rates, and weaning rates. And on the cost side, I think paying attention to things like harvested and supplemental feed, as well as grazing costs, along with labor and equipment, are big expenses that we want to pay attention to and look at opportunities to either uh, reduce those expenses or more competitively use those input resources. A good website to look at production uh, benchmarks is the CHAPS program from North Dakota State University. They have about 2,000 operations that, excuse me, not 2,000, they have about 200 operations that put data into their program each year. And uh, from a production standpoint, you can see some benchmarks there in terms of how others do. One thing I want to caution you with production benchmarks is uh, just because someone else is doing that doesn't mean they're doing it profitably. And so there's times when my benchmark numbers I might not look as good from a production standpoint as someone else's, but my operation may in fact be more profitable uh, because what I'm able to produce, I'm able to do uh, at less cost or the value of the product I'm selling is greater. And so being aware of that I think is important when you look at production numbers and are benchmarking those, comparing yourself to someone else. When we identified how our ranch looks, uh, and benchmarked it, then I think we want to pick one or two areas to focus on each year. Looking at those areas where you see the greatest opportunity to make progress is a good one. One that jumps out for me for a lot of folks is in the area of harvested feed. You know, if you're feeding $100, $150 worth of harvested feed and you can reduce that by 20%, that has a significant value. On the other hand, if you're spending $20 on vaccine or on vet expense and you reduce that by 20%, you're saving $4 not such a big deal. So focus on those areas where we have the greatest opportunity to make an impact. Then I think set some goals for where you want to go and make a plan to get there. I also think there's tremendous value in developing kind of a consultant team for your ranch. Even if maybe you're the only employee of the ranch, maybe you're an owner operator, there's some real value in inviting other successful ranchers, perhaps your veterinarian, a banker, an accountant, or some extension personnel to come give you input on your operation and perhaps provide you a fresh outlook or fresh ideas on maybe some things you could do to tweak or change your operation to better meet your goals. In summary, I really believe unit cost production is a valuable tool for making decisions. Almost every decision you make on the ranch influences unit cost production. And I think enterprise analysis is a critical piece to you need in order to perform a unit cost production. And again, in summary, unit cost of production should always be done within a systems approach to decision making. Understanding what are the potential ripple effects of decisions you make and taking that into account as you think about making ch changes to your operation or making decisions. In conclusion, if you have questions about unit cost of production or looking at doing one for your cow-calf enterprise, please feel free to contact me at the email on your screen.